how amazing we are back and do I have a tutorial for you, tutorial loving people. Now I suspect this one is probably going to be fairly popular because I mean, buttons are pretty essential to using the engine and I'm sure that pretty much anybody using Godot will come across buttons for some use case. Um, and if they don't it's pretty strange and I suspect it actually probably should. Uh, so let's move on to the big old node tree and have a look at what's going on. Now you might notice that all of the button nodes are actually children of this unselectable base button thing. And this is exactly what it sounds like, it's an uninstallable class which aggregates all of the core behaviour for all of the button nodes uh, in the engine. So all of these are children of this because they inherit certain things from the base button node. So looking at the documentation, which I have right here. This includes some things like pressed, uh, toggled, uh, is hard to get the draw mode. Uh, it's pretty easy to figure out what most of these do, so I won't go into much detail on them. Um, and also, these signals make up pretty much the foundation of how buttons work in this engine. So there is the button down signal, there is the button up signal, the press signal, and the toggled signal. And basically, these are easy. Emitted when the button starts being held down, exactly what it sounds like when the button stops being held down, when the button is released, uh, and pressed is actually an interesting one, and generally I would be using the pressed signal for most of this stuff, because you can actually configure it using the act this action mode constant here. So you can change when the pressed signal is emitted by changing the action mode, um, and this is basically whether... Uh, you can you can just change a property to determine whether this is run when the button is pressed down or when it's pressed or when it's released, and you don't have to uh, rewrite a bunch of code. You don't have to copy and paste anything. Uh, it's pretty much all taken care of for you just there. Anyway, so I'll go into a bit more detail in that later. So um, let's create a proper button node and investigate some of this crazy stuff that's happening here. So. Here is the button. So first of all, I'm going to ignore this stuff in the button. I'm just going to look at base button for now. Uh, and we can see there are some properties. I mean, obviously there is disabled, which, you know, you might imagine disables the button. So while it is disabled, it becomes grey. It's kind of greyed out. You can't click it. Um, toggle mode, that basically, it's kind of like, if toggle mode is enabled, then it will, you have to click it twice. So you can see once here, I can make that a little bit bigger so it's easier for you to see but uh, again it's the same idea you click it once you just to toggle whether it's on or off uh, and that's very easy to use uh, pressed you generally don't want to be setting this via the inspector I mean that's goodness I almost broke something um, but it's generally not really worth it so I, I leave this alone uh, it might be useful in conjunction with toggle mode if you want to set this to be default but chances are uh, you won't run into that use case uh, and now for action mode, which is, again, what uh, I was mentioning earlier, there's button press and button release. And basically this is the condition on which the action, the pressed signal, goes out. So you can see we have button press here. This would uh, make it see when you click down, it would send the signal. And this, when it's set to release, is when it would you release the button. Uh, usually for UI elements, I set this to release. You can set it to whatever you want, I can't stop you. But, um, yeah, I mean, you could change it if you like. I mean, usually, if you just put it to button press, it can, like, maybe, um, you know, put you through menus a bit faster than you really want to as a user. But anyway, that's a, that's an, that's a decision that is up to you. Uh, and now this focus mode thing is similar to, if you remember in the first video, we looked at focus in the control node section. Uh, and there's all this, these buttons to select it, and sometimes in Godot it'll automatically figure it out. There's a little blue line which indicates focus. You can see a little blue outline. Um, but um, this focus mode thing determines basically how this node grabs focus. So the, when it's set to all, uh, this basically means that it can... Uh, so get focus via the arrow keys, via the mouse, or via any way that anything can get focus. Click, likewise, is you can only get focus via actually clicking on it manually, and then none means you just can't get focus on this node. Again, usually I don't play with this, I leave it at all, that's fine. Um, and now there is a pretty good one, shortcut, which I have just been dying for an opportunity to use it. But basically, it's a shortcut. So if you want to make this button like the play button, and you want to do like a like the space bar to do a shortcut, 
you do shortcut input event key uh, and then you I think you'll have to look up the um, scan code for it I suppose but the point is um, that it's super easy um, you, you you just get the scan code there's a few options here you can do any of these screen touch screen ja drag those are for like mobile stuff I suppose mouse motion you could do if you really wanted to um, and all of these things are shortcuts which will trigger the pressed um, event um, and that's really useful uh, this group is again not something you really want to be setting in the inspector but it is um, well you create a button group class and you can see here you can't do anything with it really but basically you if you have like three or four buttons you could in a script you can say oh well I want this variable to be a new button group and you can set multiple of these buttons into that button group so you set button dot group equals and then the group you just created and what that does this little reference to that group will make sure that if any other button in this group is pressed uh, no other button can be pressed so it's kind of like radio buttons if you know on a web page um, it's kind of like that and it is pretty useful if you want to have like uh, if you want to stop the player from like selecting or toggling more than one thing at a time without a lot of you know work and iterating through the, the buttons a lot um, so yeah that's pretty useful so now we've done that we can go up to the button node so here we have the text property and this is exactly what you might think you can put some text in here it'll show up in the thing pretty nice uh, now there is also the icon you can do icon here um, there's the little mascot here and usually this appears to the left if you have text it'll appear to the left of that still uh, and if you didn't have any text you could just make this one big thing like that with just a little image inside it but uh, yeah either way it's a little it's a little nice add-on I suppose I don't really use that very often but yeah uh, flat this is uh, this just makes it flat so basically it'll only show up if you hover over it and click it uh, this way it'll show up all the time so if I just demonstrate that it shows up all the time on flat it only shows up well it doesn't even show up then so yeah it's just a very simple little thing uh, clip text is another one which stops basically it stops the text from actually exiting the, the bounds of the of the of the button because in this case it just stops however clip text allows it to actually truncate the text if the button is too small to actually handle it and then obviously you know this stuff left to right center blah 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 that's very easy to you I mean anybody who's used Microsoft Word can deal with that or I'm sorry uh, LibreOffice writer I should say but anyway yes yeah, so that's pretty nice now let's look at some of these crazy button derivatives and there are a few uh, it's all of these so basically checkbox this is super easy I'll you know put some text here uh, the idea is that this is a literal checkbox you just click it Boop. it can be toggled it can be disabled it's nice enough to use text here same sort of stuff extremely similar boom that one's out of the way easy peasy check button again same sort of thing except this one's a nice graphical on off switch button uh, and the text appears on the other side um, you can use that if you like if you don't like the checkbox if you want it to like like full screen maybe you would not want to use a checkbox for that you might want to use like a proper uh, button like that which would um, you know change whenever you press it and now this one I very much like um, this is a color picker so you can actually see here it opens this lovely dialog with all these options and stuff with all these things you can use um, and this is what the engine itself actually uses for color picking um, and you can you know change this and you can access the color that's being selected currently using this color method or you can use this signal here the color changed signal and that's very useful um, you know if you want like character customization maybe uh, something like this makes it extremely easy to get a color and you don't have to you know worry too much about generating your own color picker or trying to program it in as long as you don't find Godot's own UI as long as that gels all right but uh, yeah now we have the menu button and now this is an interesting one this actually generates a pop-up menu when you click uh, and the pop-up menu always exists uh, it always it is always there but um, it only shows up and basically if you remember from my last video on pop-ups a pop-up menu is an interesting little thing that you can you basically have to customize it using uh, scripts so you know you, you'd attach a script file and you would 
generate all the data you put all the entries into the list um, and you can use a function for this one called get popup uh, and that will return the popup node and then you can just call things like add button uh, add radio button like all those methods that, as you would normally with a normal pop-up menu node um, but then once you've done that you can just ignore it you don't have to deal with actually making it show up you can just uh, set this button here like a scene you know, in an example here is like a scene it just pops up it's really nice um, so yeah and now we have another one which is if we can just see uh, option button and now again this one is a little bit it's one of the ones that requires uh, customization via scripts which isn't the most convenient thing but like it's not that bad once you get the hang of it um, you can add items and you can link this item selected signal here to you know some script to, to determine which one just got selected so basically I can show you this it's just it's a little thing a little menu here and you can put some entries into this and it'll scroll down uh, you can use these buttons here to go up or down it's quite useful and again all of this stuff is stuff that the Godot engine actually does implement uh, on its own and now for the tool button which is a pretty nice little button here um, it basically it's the exact same as a normal button except it's flat and that's exactly the only difference you can't disable this even if you try I'm pretty sure it'll just get enabled again when you try um, but yeah it's pretty much identical to a normal button with flat automatically enabled so that's something interesting I suppose if you are into that and that's 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 pretty much it for those ones the direct derivatives of this button thing there's two more and they're both pretty simple I mean they're very they all extend from base button all the core logic is from base button so you have link button uh, and this is basically it's kinda like a hyperlink if you've ever seen a hyperlink on a web page um, it, it functions exactly like that you can you know link this button exactly the same as anywhere else you can set the text you can do the underline on hover maybe that's like a, you know like a real web page something like that um, and that's that's pretty useful uh, and that's really easy then a texture button which I probably use more than anything else um, which allows you to load in a texture for this stuff so you can see here there is a lovely Godot mascot icon here uh, and you can set this to, you can set pressed texture, the hover, disabled focus, whatever. You can set a click mask, which is a, we'll get to that in a second. Um, but you can actually do what's called expand here. So if this is enabled, it'll attempt to expand this texture to the entire uh, vect of the button. So there's some modes here. We can do tile. We could do keep, which is doesn't do anything as far as I can tell. Keep centered. Uh, keep aspect keep aspect centered and keep aspect covered uh, and these are all pretty standard things I mean if you ever messed around with like a windows um, wallpaper thing it's basically all the same functionality usually I leave expand disabled uh, or not on because if I make a texture for my texture button I'm pretty much happy to keep it there you know however I designed it to be in a surprise or my graphics editor of choice um, Generally speaking, that's that's just not something I you generally use, but you know you might want to use it. Uh, now there's the click mask, which actually takes in a bitmap, and what this does, it's a black and white bitmap, which when if you have something like this shape, but it's like uh, white is the clickable area and black is the non-clickable area, you can actually um, imagine this button was like curved, maybe maybe it was a big C, uh, and you didn't know because if, in the middle of this big C there was like a little space you couldn't you could click and it would click the whole button you didn't want to do that well with the click mask you can because you could you would just do a white or a bitmap image the same resolution as your texture button textures uh, and you would just make white for where it's clickable and black for where it's not and that's it it's super easy you could just work it out pretty simply it does have to be a bitmap as far as I can tell but yeah pretty good and there you have it. That is pretty much it as far as buttons go. Uh, as always, if, if you have any further questions, feel free to like leave a comment or join my Discord and ask me there if it's really urgent. I'm usually quite happy to be distracted from whatever I'm doing, so feel free to make use of that. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching and stay tuned for more tutorial videos because apparently you guys love them. I'm getting so many subscribers, it's literally the best thing that has ever happened to me. Anyway, I guess next time I'll be doing containers, which is 
significantly more scary and a bit bigger. You can see all of these containers here. I'm probably going to have to split this up into two two videos because that's that's a lot of stuff, okay? That's a lot. But uh, anyway, I'll I'll think about it when I'm actually writing this up. Just enjoy what I've done so far. Subscribe to me, obviously. That should go without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway. Subscribe to me.